All she wanted was to get jazzy on him when she signed a record deal with Jason Derulo. I'm not going to bend my morals in order to move forward with my career. Singer Amaja Gibson is stepping into the shade room just days after filing a lawsuit accusing Derulo of trying to pressure her into a sex ritual. I feel like I'm being retaliated against intimidation. She says when she turned down his advances, she was dropped from her label. Devastated, my heart dropped. What she says is going on behind the scenes that no young female artist should ever have to go through. I'm Justin Carter, this is TSR Investigates. Amaja Gibson is no stranger to the music industry. She was signed to Rock Nation in 2017 along with her sisters, but when the group broke up, her popularity as a solo artist, it took off. And it was around the same time she met pop recording artist Jason Derulo. The two, they kept in touch. And then four years later, in August 2021, she was signed as the breakout artist on a new joint venture that Derulo secured with Atlantic Records. Amaja finally got the break she dreamed of. So she thought. And I felt like this was like destiny for me. Destiny unfulfilled. Gibson says that she was elated when she got chose by Jason Derulo to be the first female artist for a new project with the label he owns, Future History and Atlantic Records. Was there a flirty relationship between you two? Um, I've always tried to keep a professional setting with everyone, especially with men in the industry, because we all heard those stories. Um, this is something, like I said, I've been wanting to do since a little girl and no one gets taken serious if you're just out here trying to take things beyond a professional level. Her contract said that she'd be given an advance payment of $150,000. Later, they generate a budget to curate her first album and market it. They were produce and distribute a mixtape within four months and a full album six months after that. Also, her first single would have Derulo as the featured artist. She says the terms were standard and the studio sessions began November 2021 at his studio in Tarzana. He was Ubering me, so they were from like 9 p.m. to like 2 in the morning, those sessions. And that's when Gibson says things went left. But with those sessions, he started to um, text me um, saying like, oh, are you going to have a drink with me? And I told him I'm not a drinker. Um, and he wanted me to go out to dinner with him. According to the lawsuit filed in Los Angeles County Superior Court, Derulo, quote, assured her that he would arrange for an Uber to take her home. She says Derulo did pressure her to drink with him once before. I know when you don't accept an offer, people can get offended. So I took a sip of the drink, but I let him know that this was at a, a large amount of alcohol. It's super strong. And he took a sip of the drink and he had confirmed it was super strong. She declined to drink any further. Something compelled me in, 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 in a session with him to tell him, say, hey, I'm not going to bend my morals in order to move forward with my career. And he responds with, oh, well, you might have to do goat skin and fish scales. And this is in front of his engineer. And I froze because I don't know what that means. I only know that fish scales is uh, related to cocaine. I've never done cocaine in my life. Um, and the goat skin, I didn't know what that was. So when I told my mom about it, we did some research. I found a couple articles and it was relating back to a Haitian culture ritual of uh, a sex ritual and sacrificing a goat and, you know, with blood and everything. And that's something I'm not willing to do in order to move forward. The lawsuit defines the ritual as a Haitian reference, referring to, quote, conducting sex rituals, sacrificing goat, goat blood and doing cocaine. It claims the, quote, manner and timing of such a statement meant that Derulo was demanding sexual acts from Amaja in order for Derulo to fulfill his role as her mentor, supervisor, and musical collaborator. This explicit demand for sex in exchange for success was reinforced through Derulo's subsequent behavior, end quote. Gibson says that she brushed it off and began preparing for a big meeting with Derulo and top executives at Atlantic Records in New York City. When it was time to go to that meeting, I was alerted by him seconds before getting out the SUV that there's going to be another artist by the name of Rosa joining us in the um, meeting. And I was under the impression that the meeting was for me because he, I, he told me I was going to be the first artist signed to his label. And then when it was time to showcase her music, she was 
showcasing a record that was promised to me. She says she was blindsided and confronted Derulo in the car after the meeting ended. Turns his head, uh, what does she have to do with you? Uh, we weren't gonna tell you anything. Uh, we don't have to tell you anything. And I'm just froze in the back because I'm by myself. I don't have my mom here. I just need to get back to the hotel room. From that point on, she vowed only to conduct business with Derulo and her manager present, which is her mother, Sandra Bales. Months went by. She says that she was itching to get back in the studio, but Derulo and his manager, Frank Harris, had stopped answering her calls and messages. She says she started paying for her own sessions at a studio elsewhere until she finally got a hold of Derulo and they set up a session on June 7th, 2022. I let him know that I was on my way. Um, I got my videographer. Um, it was a lot of traffic. She admits that she was an hour late. She says that President Biden was in town, which snarled traffic. And as soon as I step inside the building, he comes charging towards me, uh, yelling at me to the point where I had to step back with my right foot and I put my hand on my chest because I was just so shocked at this man charging towards me. If I would have stood with my two feet in front, he would have bumped into me. And he just kept kept on going, who do you think you are as a new artist? You're supposed to be here before, uh, before me um, and just embarrassing me in front of all of his staff. Uh, and there was all men there and everyone was just quiet. And then after that, he tries to give me a hug and I turn away and run to the bathroom and I go and cry. Um, his engineer had to go in and comfort me saying, it's, oh, it's okay, it's just tough love. That's not tough love. You could have pulled me to the side. Why did you have to make a scene or even just invade my personal space to the point where you're gonna hit me? She says the session was cut short. Derulo claiming that he had a flight to catch. It was the last time she spoke to him. Three months later, she received a phone call from Derulo's team that she was being released from her contract. Devastated, my heart dropped when I heard that because I was like, I'm not asking to be released. I'm asking to release my music. She claims they wanted her to be happy. No one complained about my performance. No one complained about my execution on these records. I was constantly told I was a superstar and you guys agreed on putting a single out. Now I'm being released. Attorney Nima Romani is president of West Coast Employment Lawyers who are representing Amaja Gibson. We're looking at two different types of sexual harassment. The first is the retaliation against Amaja. She chose not to have sex with him, and that was her choice. She can't be punished for that, which is what Jason tried to do. The other type of sexual harassment is the preferential treatment given to others that were engaging in sexual activity with Derulo. So that's that creates a hostile work environment where you're not only punishing people that don't, but you're rewarding people that do engage in this type of conduct. And it's unlawful under California law. They're seeking damages for unpaid wages, loss of earnings, deferred earnings, attorney's fees, and emotional distress. What compelled you to come forward? This whole time I've just been trying to get help. And, you know, me sharing my story, I hope other women, like you said, um, feel strong enough to you know, hold people accountable that did them wrong. We have been in contact with Jason Derulo, who's working with his management team to get us over a response, but he did send a message to his Instagram followers on Friday. I wouldn't normally comment, but these claims are completely false and hurtful. I stand against all forms of harassment and I remain supportive of anybody following their dreams. I've always strived to live my life in a positively impactful way. And that's why I sit here before you deeply offended by these defamatory claims. God bless. We did reach out to Atlantic Records for a comment. They tell us that they backed Jason Derulo's statement on Instagram and any new developments and updates, they'll be sure to keep us in the loop. For TSR Investigates, I'm Justin Carter. Hello roommates and thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Do you want more TSR Investigates? Be sure to subscribe and check us out at theshaderoom.com.